Hello, I'm Jackie Hornwig with Ontario Tech University's Brilliant Energy Institute, and I'm talking today about advancing hydrogen for clean energy systems through the development of, of hubs, and really happy to be here with you virtually and then later uh, also for the discussion. So um, at Ontario Tech University and the Brilliant Energy Institute, the lands we're situated on are covered by the Williams Treaties and it's are in the traditional territory of the Mississaugas, a branch of the greater Anishinaabeg Nation, including Algonquin, Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi. And these lands remain home to a number of Indigenous nations and people, um, including uh, one of our partners, the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, and several others as well. And we are really thankful to be welcomed on these lands in friendship. And I would also say that Brilliant Energy Institute in particular, as well as the broader university, we are very committed to working toward reconciliation and allyship, and that we recognize it's a continuous process. For Brilliant Energy Institute, of course, being in the energy sector, really important because there's so much connection to Indigenous peoples and the lands and their activities in this area as well. So just want to start by giving a backdrop for hydrogen hubs in Ontario and what it is that we are responding to in developing these hubs. So first, if we start internationally in terms of countries, there's several countries globally that are accelerating the use of hydrogen for decarbonization, as well as more generally as an energy carrier. And certainly the United States Inflation Reduction Act and the G7 Hydrogen Action Pact have both been substantial contributors to this. As well, we see China uh, really out in front in terms of hydrogen development, as well as enabling technologies like clean fuel cells. As well, federally, if we look across Canada, in December 2020, the Government of Canada Hydrogen Strategy laid out a framework for hydrogen as a tool to address climate change and position Canada as a global leader in clean fuels. And that was followed up in 2022's fall economic statement and in the 2024 budget, which recognized the role of hydrogen and provided tax credits and other incentives, and notably that they would increase with the level of clean hydrogen or decarbonized hydrogen. Similarly, the Inflation Act uh, really put pressure to move sooner rather than later because the incentives are highest for those early adopters who start 2023, 2024, and then the incentive drops off as you get closer to 2030. So we really have uh, federally and internationally in North America, a uh, move fast and decarbonize it uh, is really the message that's being sent. In Ontario, in April, 2022, Ontario uh, launched their low carbon hydrogen strategy to develop the hydrogen economy in the province and to position Ontario as a clean manufacturing hub. And that announcement was followed up almost immediately with the announcement by Chura Power, selecting the Niagara region as its first Ontario site for large-scale hydrogen production and use of a 20 megawatt electrolyzer to produce green hydrogen that will feed into their gas generating systems and the source they're using is hydro. And also to note that there are a lot of companies throughout Ontario that are looking at electrolyzers on site paired with their industrial sites. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So lots going on in the province and including the development of some hubs. In December 2022, we saw the IESO, the Independent Electricity System Operator Pathways to Carbonization Report, came out and identified a role for hydrogen in decarbonizing Ontario's energy systems. And then in February of this year, of course, the Ontario government announced the Hydrogen Innovation Fund, $15 million over three years to do three things, uh, to investigate, evaluate, and demonstrate how low carbon hydrogen technologies can be integrated into the grid uh, to both balance and strengthen system reliability. So interim region, we, um, going back to that announcement in April 2022, we looked at the idea of developing a regional hydrogen hub based on a number of characteristics of Durham region, um, one of which is that it is a clean energy epicenter already with more than 11,000 people employed in the sector. And Ontario Power Generation has the Darlington and Pickering nuclear plants here 
that provide about 35% of Ontario's electricity. So we've really got a strong energy focus here. And then that combines with also a deep history within the region of automotive and transportation focus because, of course, General Motors Canada headquarters have been here um, for, um, I guess, about a, a century. And so if you think about Durham region, you know, we're really at that nexus of energy and automotive and transportation, which of course makes this an ideal place for development of technologies related to electrification and clean fuels. And that in part also is because of the university, uh, Ontario Tech University, and the uh, depth in both of those areas in research and innovation and commercialization. As well, uh, Durham Region is part of the Greater Toronto Area, of course, and Canada's largest urban and economic centre. And that adjacency, it can be really important in terms of proximity as we think about hydrogen deployment. And then we have that longstanding history of energy has meant a supportive community and an energy literate one, which we'd, I'll talk about also a little bit later. You can see on the right, we looked at developing a steering committee with producers, distributors, users, research and talent within Durham region to see whether this region made sense for a hydrogen hub. And so that really followed on that April 22 announcement. And in summer of 2022, started to bring partners together. Really at the beginning, it was Brilliant Energy Institute at Ontario Tech University, working with the Hydrogen Business Council, as well as with the Canadian Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association. And then we brought um, also simultaneously the region of Durham became part of the steering committee, followed by Atura Power, Bruce Power, and Bridge, really in that producer distributor space. But then also we looked at the user side and the, in some respects, the distribution side. We had the Port Authority, as well as General Motors, as well as St. Mary's Cement, the cement plant in Durham region, as well as looked at an end user, Miller Waste, which has the garbage truck fleet and is looking at their own decarbonization of their fleet as a way to incorporate clean fuels or electrification. And as they're going through that thought process, they're contributing as well to the um, hub in terms of thinking of what are the kinds of things that the end user will need and how is it that we can um, help. I would say with the uh, region of Durham being on board, really helps us also think about some of those areas like procurement and policies that provide incentive for some of those users to cross over as they're looking at supporting municipal infrastructure. As well, we are also seeking participation by Indigenous communities and industry organizations, and also looking at the college sector as well, because also in terms of talent pipeline, both the universities and colleges will have an important role to play. So if we look at Canadian emerging hubs, aside from the one that we're looking at at Durham Region and looking at what we contribute, there's also in Bruce County where they're looking at the use of nuclear as an opportunity as a source for hydrogen. In Sarnia, really to support the petrochemical community there. In Hamilton, very steel focused. In Niagara, of course, the Atura Power Hydrogen Center. The Greater Toronto Airport Authority is looking at that microcosm that they have of transportation, not only in air, but all of their ground sources of transportation. And then we have the hub in Durham region. So when we look at Durham in the hydrogen ecosystem, there's five areas that we're looking at. The first is in the research and development, and this is where obviously the university has a big role to play. So Ontario Tech has the Clean Energy Research Lab that has 15 plus years of hydrogen research, the IAEA Collaborating Center, which is very focused on both uh, development of uh, nuclear for clean energy systems, but also specifically how that works and integrates with hydrogen, as well as the Brilliant Energy Institute, where we're looking at taking all of the technical expertise at the university and elsewhere, including other parts of academia, industry, and working with government to really look at policy and engagement and deployment of clean energy systems and how they all come together. So really about collaboration, policy, and engagement, um, as well as energy literacy. So really being that connector between the technical and the policy. The second piece are the potential producers. So we do have the nuclear plants, which of course right now are very focused on producing clean energy for the electricity system. 
But looking at in the future, is there an, an opportunity, especially now that Pickering is being refurbished, but also looking at those individual user producers, as well as Enbridge in terms of bringing hydrogen into Durham region and Durham region being part of that hub and spoke model across the 401 corridor, for example, which really gets to that third piece, which is the potential access points. So the 401 corridor, the 407 corridor, train station. We have a Via Rail GO station in Oshawa, as well as several um, leading up to that in other municipalities throughout the region. And as well, we have the deep port, both uh, one with the Harbor Commission and the Port Authority, as well as at St. Mary's Cement, and then also other GTA hydrogen infrastructure as it builds. And then for potential users, uh, municipal uh, infrastructure and services, transportation, but also big agricultural community and a strong industrial sector. So really fitting into that uh, vision of the province of a clean manufacturing center. And then the last piece that's really important and maybe one of the greatest contributions and differentiators in addition to the work of the university and the facilities there is that we have an energy literate community. So really supportive region that really understands energy um, with having the history of the nuclear plants uh, in the region now for over 60 years. So this gives us uh, not only energy literacy within the broader public and the people who are working in the energy sector, but also in terms of the uh, local governments who may be needing to think about this in their own clean energy plans and having a comfort level with looking at these new technologies and 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 an expertise in how to integrate them as well. So really quickly, I talked about a few of the pieces at Ontario Tech in terms of energy, and just to highlight a couple of more. So I talked about the Clean Energy Research Lab, which is really about advancing those technology readiness levels. But in addition to that, we also have the ACE Climate and Energy Core Research Facility which provides a testing and commercialization facility for hydrogen and in fact already is doing testing for companies across North America at the facility. So there is that opportunity to connect research into commercialization and then going back to that really friendly energy literate community that we have in Durham region, uh, the ability to look at deployment and pilot projects in terms of integration into community use. Um, as well, there are uh, several other enabling energy research facilities at Ontario Tech that includes energy research laboratories for electrification and clean fuels, a center for small modular reactors, as well as several cross-disciplinary labs, including in advanced manufacturing, robotics, cybersecurity, as well as a digital Life Institute, which is all about looking at the interaction between technologies and humans uh, to help with that integration into civil society. As well, we're looking at those enablers of hydrogen acceleration and really looking at some of the lessons from the transition accelerator uh, out in Edmonton, for example. So looking at things like the economics, how we pair the technologies, thinking about who could be those early adopters and then also those corridors. And just from the proximity perspective, uh, as mentioned earlier, to the corridors, the different uh, highway corridors, as well as airports and deep sea ports, a lot of opportunity to think about how Durham can contribute. And I think one of the important things when we think about the hydrogen hubs across Ontario, as well as federally, Durham is not looking to be the epicenter of uh, hydrogen in Ontario or in Canada, what we are looking to do is say, how can Durham fit in? What are the unique things that we can contribute to moving hydrogen forward uh, in a way that makes sense and looking at how it fits into clean energy systems? So how does it fit with all of the other pieces? So in terms of next steps for the Durham Hydrogen Hub, we are continuing the research and commercialization work and looking at scaling that up. And then as well, we are looking at working with other hubs within Ontario to do a mapping study and really put together what each of the hubs has to contribute into that broader hydrogen picture in terms of getting that to mobilization and working with the province to really provide that picture of what Ontario has 
to work with in terms of achieving the province's goals for Ontario as a clean manufacturing center, as well as extending that collaboration federally and internationally to really leverage the opportunities to work together and build from each other, but also to meet the federal government's uh, stated goal of making Canada a clean energy partner. Finally, we're also looking at the opportunity that we think because of Brilliant Energy Institute and the university to really help raise visibility, collaboration, and be part of that knowledge mobilization. And that includes potentially a pilot project in Durham region with some of our partners to help to start to demonstrate and bring that visibility of how hydrogen can be integrated into communities. We're looking at the Provincial Electrification and Energy Transition Panel as well, as well as further federal policies to see how we can input. So that's it for me. I just thanks very much. And if you have any questions, my contact information is here on the last slide. We're brilliantenergyinstitute.ca and you can find the contact information there as well. Thanks for including me in the conversation. Mm -hmm.